If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. Today is Friday, the Ascend program where we prove that the magic works. So sometimes I will do a reading with someone who has paid for a reading with me and I will give them the option to have it recorded and have the recording put onto the show. And that's the case with this reading. The person in the reading has offered to have it put onto the podcast. And so we are very grateful for that. So listen in and enjoy. Some thought to uh, the, what it was that you wanted to work on today. Well, so um, the the big sticky question for me is uh, is related to financial independence and um, just like I lead a very abundant life, but I'm always like on the edge financially. You know, like it's like leveling up financially. I, I keep hitting this this rooftop uh, or this ceiling or whatever you call it, and uh, so. Um, that's what I'd like to talk about because that's like, okay. like the thing. So, okay. So, um, if you were to, I'm, I'm just sort of feeling into the question. Um, yeah. because a lot of times when you hit that, you know, you, you've got enough, but you aren't getting to where you want to go. It's a question of, um, permission and loyalty. So, mm. If and I'm not asking you to think hard about this, but if I were to just ask you uh, off the top of your head, who in your family of origin um, didn't get to achieve their dreams? Yeah, yeah. lots of them. Okay. Lots of them. Yeah, there there are a lot of stories around finances. Um, an immigrant family, you know, the the grandfather who handed over the patent to the company and, you know, his wife who, uh, who you know, blamed him for the rest of his life because he didn't, you know, keep the patent. And then uh, then there's a whole, there are a whole bunch of uh, academics um, in my father's line. This is my paternal um, my mother, academic um, as well, and one of my my eldest sibling made money and lost it. You know, it, there's a there's a lot of that. You know, they're making yeah, and they're losing, or not making it, or whatever. And like even when my father's stuff, he had some stuff. He was put in a home, and his stuff was. Uh, um, put in consignment for being sold like it was stolen. You know, there's there's stuff like that that happens. So at one point I just said, well, I'm just going to skip two or three generations because at some point they were all in Eastern Europe and they all made it out during the programs, which means somebody had some money, you know. I'm just mm -hmm. going to skip them all <laughs> and, and like tap into that energy. So that's that's, a, you know, yeah. Does that give you enough information? Yeah. yeah, and it's um, I see it on the I'm, paternal side more than on the maternal side. But yeah. on the maternal side, sorry, and I'm just going to add this because it came to me on the maternal side. There's the, uh, the 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 resounding story that comes to mind is, you know, my mother being told be be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. Okay, and then she died when she was 42. So you know, there's like, right. So. That might be a little bit more sticky now that you talk about it. You know? Like it might be like, well, yeah, I better be careful what I ask, you know, kind of thing. I've done a lot of work on this stuff, but it's still there. It's very sticky. Okay. And you said um, Pomgram, so I'm assuming the background is Jewish. Mm. On my father's side, yes. On my mother's side, uh, no. I don't know exactly why they left. Uh, they were also from more the Polish part of white Russia at the time, and and, okay. and they left, but they were not Jewish. Okay. I'm not sure why they left. There's a historic thing about, particularly in the Ashkenazi populations, 
of um, not being allowed to thrive. Oh, okay. So that's interesting. When I did my my uh, DNA thing, um, it just is Ashkenaz as far as and Ashkenazi as far as you can go back, right. like like as far that's, as you can go back. Yeah, yeah, that's so. I'm saying this this uh, knowing what I know about the historic persecution of Jews, particularly Ashkenazi Jews. Um, of course, the Sephardim also, but, you know, in the pogroms in, in Europe and Poland, and you know, Russia and, and all the rest of that, it's like every time they found something that they could, you know, thrive at, somebody said, well, you don't get to thrive at that. And they took it away from them. You aren't allowed to do that. Right? Yeah. How interesting, that. because I, I always have this feeling like uh, the rug being pulled out from under me kind of thing, you know, right. and. And when I get logical about it and I do the cognitive behavioral therapy and say, what's the evidence? There's like zero evidence for it in my own life. The evidence is that the contrary, but it's not, it still hangs on there. That kind of, you know, when's yeah. it going to be pulled out from under me? Yeah. Right. Which is what happened to your ancestors over and over mm -hmm. and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the things about uh, family constellations, and I don't know how much you know about it, but. Um, they talk about entanglements and mm. entanglements are when the child's mind, we're not talking adults, adults can logic through this and say, this doesn't make any sense. Right. But right. the child's mind says, um, you know, I recognize my existence comes through this line. I wouldn't even be alive. And so there's profound love in that line, regardless of the actual relationship between you and your, your parents. Mm -hmm. um, is that the, the child, the intrinsic child, knows that it wouldn't be here without that. And the, um, so there's a, in the child's mind, I, I will, they choose to belong by being mm -hmm. loyal to the family mm -hmm. dynamic. Okay, so this is who we are. This is how I show that I'm part, you know, that, that I belong, that I am loyal, that I love you. I love you by becoming just like you. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, I'm gonna let let's just find another way to love here. Yes, <laughs> enough is enough. <laughs> well, yes. Okay, that's exactly how um, a lot of constellation work came into being was recognizing that there are these long um, morphic field kinds of things that get passed down through DNA. Mm -hmm. You're so I, I should double check. You're not adopted, right? No, no, not okay. adopted. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. makes a difference, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But the uh, so this long line of you can't have what you want, or if you're good at it, it's going to get taken away from you because it has to be given to other people. Then you you can't have it, right? Right, right, um, right. Okay, so, so that what, that resonates yeah. pretty deeply. Like I can yeah. like feel it. You know, it's like oh, yeah. yeah. Still okay. okay. I I have done transgenerational work. Like I pulled out uh, I I pulled it out. It's lying on the floor right now. Like the family tree when I was doing that years ago before my before my daughter like 20 25 years ago or something I did it and I mm -hmm. I pulled it out and I like did all the research to find as far back as I could go I can't go back that far um but yeah so interesting yeah. so cancellation work happens in two pieces um mm -hmm. if needed and I don't think we need the first piece for this the okay. first piece is what is called uh what I call exploratory Okay, okay, which is where you set up the representatives and you check in with them and you it can be done with on a tabletop with using, you know, uh, little pieces for different whatever. And you move them around and you test them and whatever. But the idea is to come back to uh, the exploration is to get to what's the issue and, and then from the issue, the second piece, the resolution. Okay, okay, okay. nice. So, and I will also say that constellation work is not, um, it's like, it's usually never one and done, right? Our ancestors have a lot of stuff going on and the, you know, you, you, you take off one layer and sometimes another layer comes up or, you know, you deal with the father's line and there's stuff on the mother's line or, you know, things along that. So there are all these pieces that is, um, but what you try and do is go after something that is most present, which is mm -hmm. that you felt that resonated very deeply. Um, mm -hmm. You try and work with something that is most present, that's going to be a, a big enough shift so that uh, the phrase is so that life goes on well. 
Okay. 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 Now, um, so the, I don't think you need the exploration because it, to me, it's pretty clear that, you know, you feeling like the rug's going to be pulled out of, out of you, the, the ceiling that you talked about in terms of can't get past it. You're doing fine where you are, but you just, there's, there's, it's kind of like you're allowed to thrive in a small way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But not anything bigger. Be yeah. careful what you ask for. If you want something Be bigger. Be careful what you ask for. Right. right. And there's, there's a, there's a slight nuance to it. I don't know how pertinent this is, but it came up and that's that there's also like really, really wanting some help in this. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and I have, I've had two husbands and neither have been any good in the financing. So I know I'm not going to get the help there, but so there's this sort of like really wanting some help and then not getting it kind of, it's a similar kind of thing, actually, you know, it's and it's actually, like, it's, it's the same dynamic if you think about it, because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're being lovingly loyal by not thriving in that way, yeah, by yeah. breaking through the ceiling by, by standing firmly and, and not feeling like the rugs are going to get pulled out of you, then um, you don't necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily need help. And if you're still being lovely, if, if you're, if you've cleared that, you wouldn't need help. And if you're being lovingly loyal, why would you, you wouldn't be with somebody who could help you because yeah. that would be disloyal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, well, so the idea is I'm, I totally want to stay with the second one because we're, everything is fine. And so I want to figure this out, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I like totally want to figure this out so that I don't have, that doesn't cloud anything. And, right. and I can, I can handle this. I mean, I don't want to need help for this. I want to be able to do it. You know? yep. Okay. <laughs> so um, the, I notice you use words like figure it out, et cetera. So I'm guessing you're a thinker. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. I, I yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay. So the thing about constellation work is it's embodied work. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's literally the DNA. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, the, uh, the seven generations, except there's more yeah. generations than that, that stuff gets passed down, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so your head is going to go, this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. And it will be right because yeah. it isn't, it isn't a thinking solution. It's an okay. embodied solution. Okay. Um, in part because when you took in this lovingly loyal you know, thing. It was before your conscious mind was as part of the brain was really fully developed, which is around six or seven, mm -hmm. right? You took it in when you were still relatively an open book and anything can be said or written in there kind of thing. So um, <clears throat> that's why this work is done at an embodied level, which we can still do online. Okay. And I don't right, right. Yeah. be yeah, I get it. present to do that. But um, it's not going to help to think your way through it. Yeah, yeah. Always a good yep. thing to tell me. Stop thinking. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, no. yeah. I, I am also a thinker, so I know mm -hmm. better than to tell somebody to stop thinking. <laughs> yeah, because it's not going to happen. But I can, it's, I can feel. Yeah, can, it never happens. Mind. What you have to do is acknowledge that the thinking happens, and the the you that is more than your thoughts needs to disengage mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. thinking. And just say, yep, the thoughts are going to keep running, and I'm just mm -hmm. not going to go waiting in that particular stream right now. Okay. 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 So I, I never tell thinkers to stop thinking. It's, it's it never works. I know because I'm one. Yeah. All right. So, um, the so the first thing I'm going to do is say that you as an adult understand that the child's perspective is shaped by the child's worldview. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are there in constellation work it's been found that um children will actually will themselves to death trying mm -hmm. to take a disease from their parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they they have that kind of thinking, that magical kind of thinking that this is something they can do. So that lovingly loyal way to connect to your family is very deep in your psyche. That's why the thinking brain isn't going to get at it. Mm. It's, mm. it's actually embodied in you and it's carried in your DNA. Hmm. 
the from the standpoint of the adult looking at it i'm going to say this to the adult mind and also to the child mind is that you always belong there's no behavior ever never that will ever change the fact of your belonging because you belong by your dna hmm. okay so this behavior of being lovingly loyal by not thriving or any other behavior that goes along with this is not something that is how you belong. How you belong is by your very existence. Hmm. That's how you come down through the ancestors. You are connected by your DNA. There is absolutely no behavior that makes a difference. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that resonates with all those feelings of not of unworthiness and so forth that exactly that this come is, along and being the youngest and the forgotten one and the blah 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 blah. That is, uh, yeah, exactly yeah. that that you belong because you exist, mm. right? You know, this is DNA. You belong because you exist. There's a there's a card in the Osho Zen Tarot deck um, that I love. I love that deck. It's very image oriented. And uh, it's this lotus and this beautiful woman with long, dark hair with her back view seated, seated on the lotus leaf, looking out. And there's a field of stars. OK, and, and she's like floating in this field of stars. And it, the message of it is there is a U-shaped place in the universe. <laughs> nice. OK, yeah. there's a U-shaped place in the universe. Nobody else can be where you're sitting right now because you're sitting there. This is the you that's here now taking this space. You belong. And in families, you belong. And I keep repeating this, but it's through the DNA, not the behavior. Hmm. So there is the loyalty that is attempted to be expressed through behavior is not helping you thrive. And I'll tell you right now, the ancestors, the, particularly the ones who are no longer with us, do not look at the living and say, Yep, please suffer. Makes us mm. feel so much better. Mm. They don't. They sacrificed for their kids. They did what they did in order that life would go on well for their children and their children's children and their children's children's children and so on. Mm. Okay. They don't want to. Um, I have never yet run into a. Every now and then you've got entangled ancestors that still are hanging on to some stuff. But if you get back far enough for where they're. You know, what you see is they want life to go on well for their descendants because, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what parental love is. Mm -hmm. Do you have kids? Yes. OK, so you want life to go on well for your children, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you don't want them to suffer if you've been suffering, because after all, they should suffer because you suffered. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> OK, so. It, take that into consideration in and again i'm speaking to that lovingly loyal child mind to say this is not how you best show your love mm. okay how you best show your love and your appreciation for the life that mm. all these people carried through so that you were here in your u-shaped place in the universe is by living your life well mm. Okay. By living your life well, not mm -hmm. by restricting yourself through this lovingly loyal child mindset mm -hmm. to live a smaller life, to be loyal to them, mm -hmm. because what they really want is for you to live life well. Mm -hmm. Okay, does this make sense? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm feeling it. I'm, yeah, I'm, take it in. I'm not thinking it. I'm feeling Good. it. Yes. You, like here, this is and yes. here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's exactly where you should be taking it in. Exactly. And the, the stream of thoughts can continue to go. And I'll, and I'll tell your thoughts this is after you've taken it in and embodied everything we're doing today mm. in 24 hours, give it at least 24 hours, better 48. But in 24 hours, you're allowed to think about it all you want. OK, okay. but okay. not now. Just take it in, feel it, embody it, et cetera. Okay. So you took on a burden that wasn't yours. Hmm. Okay. To be lovingly loyal by, by being constricted. All right. Hmm. 
you need to let that burden go. Now, all burdens are they flow down through the through the the family field, but mm -hmm. at some point they need to go back all the way up. And it's never burdening anybody along the way. Okay. It just, mm -hmm. it goes back up until it dissipates. All right. And in doing so, and here's the service you get to provide to your ancestors. Isn't this cool? In doing so, it strengthens everybody in the line. Oh, nice. It's like re rewriting the timeline kind of thing. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So you not only free yourself of the burden, um, but by passing it back and allowing it to go back up the line where it belongs, you are freeing people of that component of it all the way up. Okay. How do I do Until that? it gets back in for you, I don't even know how far it goes back because this is a, this is a very, very, very old pattern. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at, at some point it started and that's where it will ground. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to know that to do this. Okay. Okay. Does, again, this make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. How do you do it? I want to know how to do that. How do I pass it back? We're getting there. <laughs> I'm laying groundwork. Okay. Oh, okay. It's like in rugby. I don't know. I think in rugby, you pass the, like you, you, you pass things backwards or something. I don't know. I don't know enough about the game, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. The, um, so the, because if I just took you straight into the resolution, particularly as a thinker, your brain would be going, why am I doing this? What's this? I don't understand. And here's what happens with thinkers when they go into this resolution. And that's why I'm laying the groundwork that I'm laying mm -hmm. is because they will, um, they'll hang on to some of it. Yeah. They'll want, no, to, no. it. They'll uh -huh. want to think about it. You know, they'll yeah. want to go, well, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 this has to, to for this to work, mm -hmm. you have to fully clear it. Hmm. OK, um, and that means you need to be willing to let it fully go. And there's uh, two parts to letting it fully go is one of which is that you have to be clear that mm -hmm. and to really feel at, at a real feel embodied way that you belong through your DNA. OK, that this is not about a behavior. Uh, of the lovingly loyal behavior that makes you belong that that you belong no matter what. There's nothing you have to do to belong. Never had to. I guess never I can was. tap into that feeling through the feeling I have with my daughter, you know, because that's the feeling that like she belongs no matter what. It's like that. It's that bond. Okay. Because yes, I'm trying to like, what and, does it and, feel like? Yeah. Right. And okay. you are a daughter. Yeah. And I it, am a daughter. The same thing for you. Okay. Yeah. Don't. How old's your daughter? She's 19 now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't bring her energy into this because yeah. at 19 she's an adult and I can only work with a. If if okay. she was six or seven and you wanted to bring her into this, I could do that because she's still a minor child. You're still responsible. Yeah, okay. But okay. Because she's 19, she's an adult. We just got to deal with you. But yes. Okay. You are a daughter, and so you can yeah. feel that. You know, you, you're in the lineage of mother daughter kind of thing. But we're actually working with your father's side right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. the one we're working with. Yeah. Yes, because I think that's the, uh, there's stuff on your mom's side too, but not nearly as powerful as what's going on on your dad's side and, yeah. or as, or as deeply ingrained in the ancestral line. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, um, you're seated, you're seated and I'm yeah. going to need you to, can you stand? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. And yeah, there we go. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to, um, first of all, envision, because imagination is reality in the subconscious and in the morphic field of constellation work, is imagine your father standing in front of you. Okay. And behind him is his father and his father and his father and his father until you can't even see how many fathers are standing in support of your dad. He comes from a long line of men who basically grew up 
had children, struggled to support their families, made sure their children survived. These are strong men. And they're all there in that line as support to your dad. Okay, so now I want you to, from just above the top of your head, through your feet and back up again, I want you to, I don't know what imagery works best for you, but if a sieve works or whatever, I want you to go through and I want you to energetically clear from your field, from your body, inside, exit, you know, top, bottom, back, front, all of it, all this burden, all this entangled love that is all about um, this burden that you took on out of love for the family. And I want you to put your hands out in front of you, cupped together. Yep, and I want you to take all that and I want you to fill your hands and just put it into a big ball that you're holding right there. So you're you're getting all that energy out of you, all of it out of you and into your hands. Okay. That's it. It was good. Okay. Um all right. There's a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say, make sure it's all out. I just had to think or come back in, so, you know. Yeah, don't have the thinking. Just just let it all clear until everything that is the taken on burden, and it, it can feel like love, you know, it's it, it, but it's the love that says, I have to be loyal by suffering. Right, I have to be loyal by not thriving. I'm okay at this level, but I can't have more. It feels a little bit endless. <laughs> yep, all the way through the bottom of your feet, through the core of your body, skin, head, hands, all, all, all of it. So it's it's in your hands, but not in you. Okay. Okay. Now, um, look at your dad. Okay. And tell him that um, you loved him enough to take this on. Ah, oh, Papa. But it's not yours. And you're returning it to where it, you're returning it to him so that it can flow back to where it belongs. Okay, so yeah, he put his hands out, didn't he? He took it. <laughs> yeah. He usually they usually do. So give it all over to him. Uh, careful. Let just he's taking it out of love. So you know, don't don't treat it. You did it out of love, so don't treat it like it was less than that. Because that means you'll hang on to some of it because you're judging it. Okay. All right. So so make sure that you're you're giving it back in love, and he's taking it in love. All right. And you can see it flowing through him back up the line. And you don't have to see where it goes. This is not a thinking thing. It's just understanding that you are not burdening your father with this. That he's just the conduit through which it flows back up the line to where it belongs. Does that feel like he's taken it all now? Okay, so now you look at him and said, I'm going to show you how much I love you by living my life well. 
by living the life that you gave me. Now, this is how I honor and love you. And then ask him to bless you as you go forward and do well in the world. And feel his blessing come for you. And his love. Oh, and he's proud of you too. I can feel that. And then tell him thank you. Mm -hmm. And you can release him from the field. Him and all his lo lovely fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers. Oh, wait. Before, well, and um, as he goes, just uh, put your hands on your chest like you were and, and use a bow to show him how you honor and respect him. Okay. Now you can sit down. I, that was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, I had stopped the recording because I came on early and I never turned it on again. So we didn't record this. Oh, okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. It says fine. it's recording on my end. Well, on mine, it says recording paused. So, okay. Okay. But so not not to worry. No. Okay. Um, but it's a uh, you know Mercury's retrograde, and for whatever reason, it is what it is. So I'm not I'm not worrying about it. I'll tell Kelly and just say sorry. But, uh, <laughs> so how do you feel? Hmm. Um. Not thinking, feeling. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So from an embodied standpoint. What you know, I said twenty four to forty eight hours is take I it in. I feel warm. I feel yeah. warm. Yeah, you is want feeling. feeling. I feel warm. Yeah. His his blessing is filling the places in you that you emptied of the burden. Okay. Okay. And so you allow that. That's why I said it takes a little bit to integrate that in an embodied way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you and you don't want to disrupt that. Okay. okay. Um. So today at least be with you okay is okay. is nurture you do good things for you um don't some people try and go out and be of service to others like right away or mm -hmm. um or even sex it's kind of mm -hmm. like that's putting energy out onto somebody else right now you want all this for you so okay. you want to hold that in and and really allow it to integrate and permeate you mm -hmm. um at all levels mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay Okay. Because the it doesn't change what happened to your ancestors, but it does change um, what is now available to you. Mm -hmm. I love that um, it was the full male lineage, because as I was connecting to the male lineage, there was the grandmother and stuff like that trying to push their way in kind of thing. And and I'm like, no, no, no. Kathy said the male lineage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So it was wow. like giving them like, and you said that very beautiful thing about the strength of those really strong men. Yes. And, uh, which does tend to in the family, you know, whatever, blah, blah, get a little bit lost in the, in the powerful women. Yes. Um, and uh, so that was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, 
Wow. That's okay. Thank you. Wow, it was fantastic. I didn't have to like you know, I can skip over all the crap that's happened and just go nope. to the to the that's, deep stuff. Yeah, that's the really lovely part is that um, a lot of uh, family constellation work can be um, very powerful and very simple. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. To uh, to allow that um, process to unfold um, mm -hmm. and to allow the to allow life to flow fully in an unentangled way to you and support you in moving on fully into mm. you know the yeah. the life that that you envision for yourself no more ceilings no more rugs pulling out no more nothing because that's not your experience actually that was theirs that was theirs yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay well i I'm, I'm very grateful thank you very much um for that and, and like i said i'm a little speechless so speechless <laughs> yeah. is Speechless is perfectly fine. In fact, uh, yeah. speechless is a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. When we do this in workshops, we generally say whoever just worked, the client who worked, gets to sit out because mm -hmm. they need time to be with their own stuff, to just kind of feel into it, allow it to permeate them um, before they do anything else. So that's mm -hmm. that's your your uh, homework for the rest of the day. Okay. Is this something that... Um... I should repeat, uh, or is it a, like a one and done? No, if you, um, assuming that you let it all go, which that's why when I saw you doing this, yeah. I'm like, wait, wait, you know, don't, don't yeah. treat it like it's nothing because this is powerful stuff. This was deeply yeah. rooted love. It was just entangled love. Okay. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, this was you loving and honoring your family. That's not something to be sort of brushed off kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So um, assuming that, you know, the clearing process and, and everything you did was truly released back, you know, you, you truly let it go because sometimes the little kid in us goes, oh, I can't, my dad doesn't look strong enough or, oh, you know, whatever kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it really felt like, you know, the you, you took the time to really clear it from your system and to really put it in your hands. And the only place I had to tweak was when you were doing yeah. the brush off thing to say, no, no, this is more, don't, don't hang on to it through judgment because judgment yeah, is yeah. A, it's an attachment. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, this is just love and you're releasing it back to where it needs to go. But it's entangled love. You're you're resolving the entanglement so that it it's kind of like a garden hose with a knot in it, right? You're undoing yeah. the knot so mm. that then the the life of all those ancestors, life flowing through them to you, flows mm. now fully instead yeah. of an entangled way. Yeah, a, a quite extraordinary feeling at the base of my uh, my spine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know where the that the the pump that that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the second pump in the Chinese system, you know, which mm -hmm. has always been a little bit blocked is, is um, opening up. Huh. Cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Very cool. V very cool. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Very, very cool. <laughs> Too bad we didn't get it recorded. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, maybe there's a recording. I, I'll, I'll check and see because it says recording on my side. So if I've got something, I'll send it along. <laughs> okay, I I would appreciate that if you do. I would I would definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, and um, other than that, why uh, I hope that um, it, do you have any questions before we go? Because oh no, no, the question is I would just, I would really rather you just be with what yeah. you have, not think about it, but just yeah. like I said, embody it and and be yeah. kind to yourself yeah. today and and take care. That's it for this week's episode. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget, what you focus on is what expands, and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,